This is a short presentation on the value of urban wetlands and what the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust has been doing in some of its work with urban communities across the UK. The photo uh, that you can see on the screen shows the Prince of Wales Community Wetland in Enfield, North London, which the WWT created with London Borough of Enfield. It's hard to tell now, but this was previously just a rough piece of grassland along the edge of Turkey Brook between a residential area and a power station. The area was previously just used by dog walkers and as a three fair, but now it's a go-to destination for communities, um, as well as supporting amazing wetlands, including reed beds, willow car, as well as boardwalks and seating for visitors to use. There's also plenty of wildlife to enjoy, no otters yet, but loads of frogs and dragonflies and wildfowl, um, as well as an occasional egret. It's a great local amenity where families come and take their kids to play and have picnics. And this is what urban wetlands are all about. Incidentally, if you're wondering where all the water comes from, it's from a surface water pipe that was broken and directed into the newly formed landscape. So when it rains, all the water goes into the wetland, powering habitat development and boosting biodiversity and our well-being, instead of going down the pipe and causing erosion, flooding and pollution in the local streams. In the photo, you can see the first reed bed that they developed, which helps settle out sediment, slow the flow of water and store flood water. A simple solution to help fight climate change. So why is the WWT so interested in urban wetlands? Well, surprisingly, they can be home to some of our rarest wildlife, such as the water vole, which is our fastest declining mammal species in the UK. Uh, many urban wetlands provide the last refuge for this species. These wetlands are often isolated, well away from urban, um, other wetland areas surrounded by urban landscape, um, which unfortunately limits the ability for populations to grow and spread. However, this isolation also protects them from some of their main predators, such as mink. Urban wetlands can support a variety of other surprising species, such as otters, and as the BDS is well documented, they can support a high diversity of dragonfly species. If you don't believe me, here's a good example. The small ponds and the wildlife garden of the Natural History Museum in central London, which are actually currently being developed and grown. But in these ponds, at least 14 species of Odonata have been recorded. So this is just proof of the fact that wetlands and urban landscapes can truly act as oases for wildlife. Wetlands are also important for people and our well-being. 84% of people in the UK live in urban areas, often without adequate access to nature. For example, currently one in three people don't have access to nature within a 15 minute walk and the lack of access is con concentrated in our most deprived areas. Spending time in wetlands improves our mental well-being and helps combat men mental illness. They do this by providing tranquil spaces where we can escape from the everyday stresses of urban life. They also provide um, areas for recreation and physical activity, so improving physical and mental well-being. With one in four people in England experiencing poor mental health each year, improving access to wetlands could be a cost-effective way of reducing pressure on the NHS and improving the well-being of communities. Urban wetlands, if utilised, could be a valuable tool in the fight against the impacts of climate change. In the UK, over 5 million homes are at the risk of flooding, the impact of which can be economically and socially devastating. While we often think of flooding as a result of rivers bursting their banks, you can also get flooding away from rivers, and this can be due to the sheer volume of rainfall we sometimes receive during storm events which are becoming more frequent as a result of climate change. This type of flooding is known as pluvial flooding. Urban areas exacerbate pluvial flooding um, as areas of hard standing reduce drainage. In addition, urban areas have their own microclimates, which are often referred to as heat islands. This is because they are often a lot warmer, warmer than the surrounding landscape as a result of a number of factors. For example, heat given off by buildings such as factories, and the fact that materials such as tarmac absorb and retain heat. The warm air this produces leads to an increased frequency of storms and periods of intense rainfall. 
Remodeling expanding drain and sewage systems is often difficult, time consuming and expensive. So it's important to look for other solutions. It's surprising where flooding occurs. You don't even have to be in a large urban area. Here is the result of heavy rainfall in my small village in Staffordshire. During the storm, rainfall flows down the hillside and accumulates on the main high street every year. I've now moved to a less soggy location up the hill. So what's the solution? One is to incorporate natural systems back into our urban landscapes. And one method is through sustainable drainage systems, also known as SUDs. SUDs are small to medium sized inventions which done properly capture the rainfall when it hits the ground, or roofs, pavements, and roads. They slow the flow right down, capturing rainfall in various structures, from rain gardens to downpipe planters. This picture shows a sud in Wolfhampstow, a place that was a victim of flooding in 2021. Rainfall was measured at being 70 centimetre deep on some roads and 200 homes were flooded. A sud was installed to store rainfall and keep some of the paths passable. In this visible section, you can see there's also a permanent pond feature. As part of the WWT's award-winning Suds for Schools programme in North London, they installed suds at 10 schools which were originally at risk from flooding, as well as creating new wetland areas for wildlife and educational learning opportunities, the benefits are already measurable. For example, peak flow in the local Pims Brook in Enfield was reduced, leading to less erosion and flooding around the stream. Pollution in the stream has also reduced as water is no longer flowing straight from the road and car parks into the stream. This photo shows Susie Earnshaw School in Barnet, London, one of the participants in the Suds for Schools project. The school, which used to have no green space, now has a pond, gravel garden and reed bed, which is already home to frogs and dragonflies. It's truly amazing how quickly wildlife moves into ponds once they've been created, even in highly urbanised areas. While there is only limited space available for the, suds, the school's suds, even a small one provides cost-effective rainwater management while providing an enhanced learning experience for children. In new housing developments, the opportunity for suds are obvious. This is a rainfall attenuation pond in Berkeley, London, complete with a viewing platform which can be used for pond dipping and lots of wetland habitat. Now, during periods of heavy rainfall, Instead of water being transported straight off site into local rivers, where it would increase the risk of river flooding, it is stored on site where it helps sustain a healthy wetland. While, build, while new builds are a perfect opportunity to install suds, they can also be installed in existing urban sites where flooding is a risk, including housing estates, hospitals, allotments and public parks. Be aware that there is action you can take at home to improve the health of your local water catchment. We thoroughly recommend checking out www.getwaterfit.co.uk for useful tips. As you know, we highly recommend adding a pond to your garden. And this is highly beneficial for dragonflies and it can be fed by the rainwater coming off your roof uh, or garage or shed. It's definitely worth, um, worth checking out this website as some water companies offer free equipment such as water butts or subsidies if you incorporate rainwater storage into your home. Here's another WWT urban wetland project, Bridgewater Blue Heritage Project, which aimed to create a network of urban blue spaces, aka freshwater spaces, demonstrating the benefit of urban wetlands. This is an aerial photo showing the Meads Eco Park, which is surrounded on three sides by urban bridge water and is used by, as a through fare for pedestrians. This was the last vestige of floodplain grazing marsh in this urban area. The WWT began restoration last year 
thanks to funding by the EA, Sedgemore District Council and the Green Recovery Challenge Fund. The WWT reinstated the long lost drum Dillabrook and created new scrapes and rebeds. They also began a programme of conservation graving and soon they will be adding new trails and boardwalks to help visitors learn about the site and explore. The hope is that this site will help hold flood water, increase biodiversity as it matures, and while also providing the Bridgewater community with a site to learn about freshwater wildlife and take part in citizen science. Another one of the WWT's flagship projects is saving the Salt Hill Stream project in Slough. The stream which runs through the heart of Slough was in a terrible condition, clogged with debris and rubbish. With the help of local communities, including mosques, churches, local schools, and the Slough Refugee Support Group, they ran over a thousand volunteer days, completing work to bring the stream back to life. Here is a short video on the project's progress. Something extraordinary is happening in your parks and community spaces. We're turning the green spaces blue. With the help of Slough Borough Council, Thames Water, the Environment Agency and the local community, we're adding water, creating beautiful wetland sanctuaries for people and wildlife. We need these blue spaces back in the heart of our cities, now more than ever. It's estimated that by 2050, 70% of humans will live in these urban environments and we know that these urban settings and modern day life is creating all these challenges for both physical health as well as mental health and I think it's well recognised that we need nearby nature and it's these sort of wetland projects which are going to be really key. This is the direction of travel we've got to go in. But in our towns and cities, We've drained many of our wetlands, covered up our rivers and streams with roads, houses and concrete, making them invisible, forgotten and neglected. And this loss isn't just bad for our mental well-being. It increases the risk of floods, leads to greater river pollution and is disastrous for wildlife. But in Slough at the Salt Hill Stream, we're turning back the clock, putting wetlands back into the heart of our city, giving nature a new home. So if you can imagine, many streams in urban areas, streams and rivers, are, are they're kind of turned into canals. They, they, they're very straight, they have these concrete sides. Very often they're actually under the ground, they're, they're culverted. And this project is giving us an opportunity to, to bring those streams back to life, to open them out, to literally uncover them, some of them, the ones that are buried, and to create wildlife habitat around their margins. Jeff is part of the team that is breathing new life into Slough's parks and green spaces. And we think this could benefit a number of, of really beautiful species, such as the kingfisher. We think we can get more dragonflies back. We think we can get bats coming back to the streams because bats feed on the insects that are emerging from, from aquatic habitats. So it's a really exciting opportunity and, and something that the people of Slough will hopefully enjoy you know, as they go about their daily lives. And for the people who've got involved, there's a huge sense of achievement. Working with the Slough community on the Saving the Salt Hill Stream project has been really positive so far. We've had a really diverse range of people keen to get involved, from schools to community groups to local people as well, all keen to get involved with taking care of their local area and improving their stream as well. We were looking for some voluntary work and we've got an allotment on the site just next door. So we cross the river every day, but we'd noticed the river was getting choked up so as soon as there was an opportunity to do some work and help out here, we thought that sounded like a really good idea. And for team leader Andy, the project's been a great example of how urban wetlands can benefit people as well as wildlife. The Salt Hill Stream has been quite badly treated in the past, but we're here to work with local people, local partners, to demonstrate just why urban streams are so important, why urban wetlands deliver the goods for local people as well as for wildlife. So what we're doing today is we're using these uh, hazel faggots and these stakes, you know, old-fashioned techniques to narrow the river to increase the stream flow but also provide some riparian habitat. You know, Slough is going to be a really good demonstration of why urban wetlands are brilliant for people. But the Salt Hill Stream is helping in other ways too. By soaking up water and slowing the flow, 
Urban wetlands like this also help reduce the risk of flooding. Something Paul Hampton from our partner Thames Water is particularly supportive of. So having green space uh, like this is important for, for everyone. Uh, for Thames Water, it also helps us manage our drainage strategies more sustainably um, and, and stopping you know, or reducing the risk of flooding that could be a problem for our customers. We've been really pleased with WWT. They've been working hard on a really innovative and engaging project to work with the local community. Um, they've been working with a range of stakeholders to try and get a great result for everybody involved. But our work in Slough is just one part of the vital work we do. WWT is one of the largest and most respected wetland conservation charities in the world, working with communities across the UK and globally, from Madagascar to Cambodia, helping manage, restore and create wetlands, saving and protecting the wildlife that call them home. 40% of the world's species live and breed in the world's wetlands. Yet these amazing places of unique value are under increasing threat. 35% of the world's wetlands have been lost since 1970. In England alone, 90% of our wetlands have been lost in the last 400 years. But by working in partnership with communities and organisations on projects like saving the Salt Hill Stream, we're making a difference. But these successes are only possible with your support. Join us and together we can help reverse the global decline in our wetlands. So this project was funded by the DEFRA's Flood and Coastal Resilience Innovation Programme. The aim of this programme is to encourage local authorities, businesses, communities to test and de demonstrate innovative practical resilience actions in their area, improve the resilience of 25 local areas, reducing the cost of future damage and disruption from flooding and coastal erosion, improve evidence on the cost and benefits of the innovative resilience actions and demonstrate how different actions work together across geographical areas. Use the evidence and learning developed to inform future approaches to and invest in flood and coastal erosion risk management. When planning projects such as saving the Salt Hill Stream project, the WWT is keen to ensure that their, all their projects have a lasting legacy and are sustainable in the long run. To ensure this, they work with local communities from the get-go to co-produce these urban blue spaces, helping ensure that they provide as many benefits to the local people as possible. Gathering local knowledge from local commu communities is also important. For example, residents will have the best idea of when and where flooding occurs. During the project, they aim to nurture a community of wetland activists who are knowledgeable and reading a ready and willing to look after and manage their blue spaces. This is because they value what the wetlands do in their urban neighbourhoods. If people easily understand what suds and other wetland areas can deliver, they are more likely to want to get involved in designing, creating and managing them for the long term. Here's a picture of young eco-ministers at one of the Suds for Schools participating sites. At this site, they disconnected the downpipe and directed it into a bog garden, which also has a pond and is full of wetland plants. In an ideal world, WWT envisions inner, inner city neighbourhoods filled with blue oases like this, in gardens and public spaces, where wetland plants thrive and dragonflies abound. When there's a sudden cloud burst, instead of going down the drain, rain is gathered safely and directed towards temporary wetlands or for example, urban willow woodlands. As a result, flooding is less frequent and less damaging, so people manage their blue spaces with care. During summer heat waves, urban heat stress is reduced by the cooling effect of urban wetlands. The WWT's works shows that this isn't in fact far-fetched and could become a reality. Their work with urban communities shows the wetlands make a big difference in the lives of people and their wildlife neighbours.